Hello and welcome everyone, Frog here. We are here today to review Sinner, Sacrifice for Redemption, that is a blend of Boss Rush and Souls-like, developed by Darkstar and published by Neon Doctrine. As I've completed that game years ago, I replayed it a bit recently to refresh my memory and make this review. There will be no spoilers in this review as always, as there isn't much to spoil about this game, there is practically no story to talk about. The 100% of Sinner include to beat some bosses without exploiting their weaknesses, or not get hit a single time by an attack on another one. Some stuff like this, overall the 100% is quite quick, and it takes approximately 7 to 8 hours as the game is quite short. I wouldn't call the game necessarily easy, as it is a Souls-like, but it isn't very hard either, as I'm not a great Souls player and I did it in an average time. You'll die a lot, and it can be frustrating. Also, some boss are gimmicky and not always done well. Sinner is like I said before a boss rush, you'll have here to beat 9 boss, the 7 deadly sins, and then 2 more, one that is optional, and the final boss. Now there is a mechanic that is unique to Sinner, and that is that every time you beat a boss, you gain a malus. You'll also be able to face every boss at the beginning. So the idea is most likely to face the toughest boss directly as you're still at close to 100% of your abilities. Each boss will give you a different malus once you decide to fight them. You'll always receive that malus before fighting the boss, which will never truly make you fight at 100% of your abilities to begin with. All this will make in theory the last boss you'll face the hardest, as you'll have all malus by then. Now, this idea of becoming weaker as the game goes on is quite interesting and it didn't really bother me. But I can tell that even though it served to make the game unique, it also goes against it for the potential to be replayed in the future. I took the game as a challenge, and once done with it, I did forget about it. Not that it didn't have some good moments, but this mechanic doesn't feel fun in the long run. At least not for that game. Some mechanics end up becoming useless because of the malus that certain boss gives you. You'll have to adapt as you're getting nerfed, that's the idea. Now the game isn't very hard in itself, and with a bit of patience you'll learn the pattern of all the bosses, but it remains a souls-like, and if you're not willing to accept to die a bit, you won't like it for sure. I would say Sinner is a souls-like for people that already did all other souls-like, and its difficulty while being able to be increased later isn't anything special either. Some bosses will unlock more weapons for you to use. Do not expect anything too fancy though, the base weaponry ended up always being the best for me. Sinner clearly lack content, the game is extremely short, we're talking 4 to 5 hours short if you're average and just wanna enjoy the content casually. I'm not counting if you want to try bosses in different order or try to beat them with other weapons, cause let's face it, 99% of the player won't do that. There is also different modes once you end the game. They are simply harder difficulty that handicap even more your character. Like removing your invulnerability frame from the rolls, or dying is a game over instantly and you will have to redo all the bosses. I didn't do those. I did play the game to completion and those difficulties didn't interest me in the slightest. They are there for people that like the game more than I did. I found the challenge of the base game interesting and the achievement didn't bring some more but the game feels extremely empty once you pass some hours on it. There is also a problem of graphics and soundtrack that I'll mention quickly here. The graphics, while being average, have mostly black and white as colors and that didn't inspire me at all. And as for the sound effects, they are quite awful. The soundtrack lack volume and the sound effects are of poor quality, very much a big downside of the game. Let us now talk a bit about the gameplay, as it is the second biggest part of Sinner with its content. While content-wise Sinner is quite weak, I thought gameplay was quite good. You'll possess two weapons and four items. Some weapons can be unlocked later by doing simple things, but you'll start with a great sword and a sword and shield. They do the job perfectly fine and you'll have to change depending on the boss. As for the items, you'll have the javelins, the health potion, the fire enchantment for your weapon, and the fire grenade. Some bosses are weak against some, some against others, that is a good part of the game, you'll need to find weaknesses. As for the gameplay, it is overall basic. You'll have the roll, the block, the parry, normal and strong attacks. It is basically a soul on steroids, as the character is quite mobile. 
Gameplay is overall the strongest part of the game, and if I had to say in my opinion, the thing that was done best. Now let us go to the positives, negatives, and the conclusion. In my opinion, the gameplay is a good part of the game, while not the best thing ever, it play well and is interesting. If you're looking for a game that goes straight to the point, and you just want to face boss, why not? Now, well, the content is lacking, and in my opinion that game should only be bought for a low price, as you probably won't play it for very long. The black and white color are a bit depressing and do not look great in my opinion. The character lack like any charisma. The game tried to tell lore, but honestly I couldn't care less as it's too random. And the sound is another downside of this title. The boss themselves are okay I'd say, some are quite boring I'll admit, while two or three can be fun to face. Sinner is built around challenge. The mechanics leads to it, but being nerfed, get tedious quickly and once you'll have cleared the game, you'll walk away to something better. I'll be honest with you, I would only consider being Sinner if I'm one of those type of person. Either an hardcore fan of souls like that did most of them and want to discover them all, or a completionist that desire a game that is shorter. If you desire a boss rush game, there is probably better, but this one remain okay, except a bit short. If your gaming time is limited, do not bother, play something more interesting. This game is like a one-trick pony that does only well its gameplay and some of its bosses. Some others are clunky and the game lacks polish. You'll find much better elsewhere, for example the From Software Souls to begin with. This video now come to an end, thanks to everyone that watched the video. Have a good day and take care of yourself.